take you up into the playoff places. It looks a lot better from where you started, and you can get the head-to-head -head against London with victory today. Yeah, that'd be big. Um, you know, obviously London beat us round one at our home court, and uh, and we beat them last time. So we get this head-to-hand -head, goes a long way to uh, to making the playoffs. And right now, I haven't really looked at the ladder, but uh, but that's good to know that if we get today, we're we're back in the race. And the key matchup for you guys today? Uh, I think Corey Dixon, our new player, um, you know, he's coming in not knowing much about any of these guys. Uh, we're going to put him on Demond Watt and, and see how he goes because Demond, Demond Watt's close to uh, MVP of the league. Good luck in today's game, thanks. Well, Nigel, last time you played Plymouth, it all went wrong at the end and then they snuck it in overtime. You'll want to try and finish that out with 40 minutes tonight. Yeah, we will. Um, they're a good team now. They're playing well and they're scoring a lot. And they also brought in another scorer in Corey Dixon. So we got to play some defense. we got to play full 40 minutes of the game. And um, our guys will be up for this game as well. You've had a few games in recent weeks that have just got away from you in the last couple of minutes. Have you been able to put your finger on why? Ah, it's execution at the end. The teams are playing a lot harder than we are. And we addressed that situation this week. It's just a matter of us playing through the, to the end of the game and executing all the way to the end. And obviously head-to-head -head comes into play. This is the decider in that one. I know it's early in the season still, but they're always good to win. Oh, yeah, because that would be one team that if we tied with, we are ahead of. So we know that, and they know that as well. Also, we're playing at home. We have to give our crowd a little something because uh, they've been coming to support us, and uh, we haven't given them good games at home anyway. So that's another factor, and the fact that, you know, it's New Year, so we're trying to get a new start. It's a dramatic end to the first half. Zach Gachette with this halfway line heave that drops in for three. We're going to pick the action up here at the start of the fourth quarter. The so last time they met, they needed an extra five to separate the teams. And we're uh, certainly been on pace in this game, Rob Paternostro, for overtime. It wouldn't surprise you. Good game so far. We just talked about it during the break. Both teams going back and forth at each other. Switch this. There you go. Lock off. Down to Watt. Watt spinning. Doesn't get the bounce. Gachette, he's been lively on the offensive glass. There he is. He does that. You have to find him. It's always hard to box out a guard. He comes in from the top. Gachette, very good at that. Start. We're level at 66, or are we? No, we're not, because Corletto hits for three. Well, he's got his average now. That's number 20 for Corletto as he tickles the twine from behind the arc. Here they go low again to Watt. Has it knocked loose, but Lockhart picks it up. Trying to find some space along the baseline. Kai Williams for three. Yes, he replies, and we're tied at 69. The play was made by Lockhart. The drive along the baseline, the pass right on time, and Kai knocks it down. Beautiful angle down there for that three-point shot. Wiltshire into Dixon. Dixon underneath. Kankerberg gets his own rebound, misses again, and tipped in at the third attempt. Oh, <laughs> Dixon says, I need a few more rebounds. Yeah. Why not? Miss once, miss twice. Put it back in again. Dixon has 19. Just kept going and eventually got to go. Kai Williams again for three, doesn't go. Wiltshire out to start. Good hand from Ickenwin. Oh, did, uh, well, Ickenwin reacted like he didn't touch it. He definitely touched it on the way. My only question was whether Williams got to the ball first or not. And well, there's some chat between Corletto and the bench there, I think. And you certainly have two competitors over there yeah. in Youngblood and Nigel Lloyd. Wiltshire driving in. Kai Williams with the rebound. He's got numbers ahead of him. Bounces it out to Ickenwin. Hello. Sets up for three. Williams is on his own. Williams against Williams drives in. Can't convert. Sturt with the rebound, there's a foul in there as Ickenwin landed on him, and he'll go to the line for two. More and more in basketball nowadays, you see the transition where you have the numbers like London just had, and they end up settling for a three-point shot. I'd like to see them go to the basket there. Probably could have got a better look, missed the three, and I talked about those long misses. They lead to fast breaks, and that time Dante Williams did a good job of putting it up the floor, missed it, but Sturt was there to draw the foul. 
Well, Adrian Sturt looking to double the lead. First one is good. Eighty one percent free throw shooter, Sturt. Former Lion played for them in Milton Keynes and in London. And he makes both there from the free throw line. Lewis. Williams. Shot clock getting low here. Oh, nice play from Williams. Driving to the basket, but he's denied. Gets his own rebound. He's got a shoot here. Wasn't time to pass. It's a shot clock violation. And Dixon like that. Look at him. He is certainly a guy who is animated. I think the home fans will love him. I think the road fans may be on him a little bit yeah. because he likes to smile and chat, but as we've seen in this league for years, those players certainly make the game fun. You might just have been one yourself, <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's a Lions ball from the end line. As Paternostro pleads the fifth on that one. Well, you always want to have guys out on the floor that want to be there and want to have fun. And the fans come and want to see that. Yep. They want to they want to boo the opposition. Yep. Uh, Lewis. Lewis zips it into Ikamwin. Ikamwin, a little deep in the lane there. Not much of a challenge, and he knocks it down. Good move from Ikamwin. Took his time. Uh, Plymouth allowed it to get way too deep. It was the positioning more than anything else that created that. Bailey driving in. Bailey trying to find a space. Whoa! Ooh, Lewis lands hard. Oh, no. I think he might be okay. It's, he's holding his ankle. I thought it was his back at first. Wow, it's Watch always this. scary. Oh. oh, it's a head. I heard the head hit the ground. And that's always scary in any sport. When you see a guy coming down like that and his head takes the brunt of it loud sound here Daniel yeah he's also clutching I think his leg here it is from a different oh man you're right but it is the foot that he it goes to first his left foot I'd like to see that again if we could to see where the foot how the foot turns but boy we could hear the head hit the ground up here well, he looks in a lot of pain as uh, he's getting some treatment to his foot. And you can see, I must admit, first, because I thought he landed on the lower bit of his back and the way he moved looked like it'd be okay. But it, he looks in a lot of pain there with the ankle. They're trying to get the boot off. Or maybe it's just trying to tie it up tighter. I try think, and run know, through it. Obviously, that ankle is what he clutched, but I'd be concerned about the head, no doubt. No, he's back on his feet. He's put some weight on it. Here's a, another look. He definitely bangs his head. Couldn't quite see on the replay there what he did to the foot. But there was, well, there was a lot of things there could have been in the referee's timeout now. Uh, Corletto using it to his advantage. London obviously is slightly distracted by a man on the floor. They've been able to use the timeout for its purpose. And get a rest. I don't think Cor Corletto's come out of the ball game yet. But you could see how the Raiders play these heavy minutes. The way they play defense, they really allow, uh, you know, for the most part, the Lions to, to move the ball up the court. They wait till they get close to the basket before the, any pressure gets put on them. Ikamwen, bit more of a challenge that time, and that was his the shot, and he also was a few further feet out. Here's Wiltshire. Start. Oh, Bailey was open for a split second there. Corletto. Spins baseline, and 
got back down before he passed the ball away, traveling violation. And he had the mismatch there. He would have liked to see Sturt take the shot. Was looking to pass. Can't go up and come down with it without doing anything. That's a travel. Well, Nick Lewis continues to get treatment away off Ooh. under the baseline as his team try to find a way back from four down here. What trying to get two? Oh, yes, it just rolls in. It's a two-point game. Well, you're going to allow Watt to get the ball. I know he's missed a few in the second half, but you're going to allow him to get it that close. He's going to put the ball in the basket. Need a little help from all of the ring there. Bailey, nice cut through for two. Nice play by Wilcher, and Bailey has good body control for a guy his size. What? Again, not this time, gets his offensive rebound, trying to find some space, and it's denied him, it's knocked away. And there you can see Nick Lewis still getting treatment on that ankle. It's almost like he seems to have uh, the original adrenaline kicked in and the pain now is starting to go through. Watt is a 60% field goal shooter. And tonight, he's missed some that you'd like him to get. He's played well, 15. But Plymouth really playing with fire, allowing him to get that close. Five of 13 on the day, shooting. Here can win with the shot clock getting low. Here's uh, Awumi, has to fire it off, gets it off the glass. And they've got numbers here, Plymouth, four on two. Watch the three. Corletto, Watch the three. to Wiltshire for three. And he hits it. You can see that setting up there. Corletto made a good pass, but Dixon, the big guy with the kick out to Wiltshire for three, seven point lead. Awumi to reply, this needs to go, it doesn't go, but what gets the rebound? Awumi will try again, that one does go. And Awumi, we've seen him with Worcester time and time again. Bail them out with threes late in the game, trying to do that now with the Lions. Dixon gets it in off the front ring. And Dixon, a little dance as yep. he goes down the court. He enjoys himself out there, it's fair to say. Williams down to Watt. Can he go to work again? Dixon is back out to Awumi for three. It's way short. A Sturt is out in front there, but Corletto will take his time. Sturt offers the screen. Dixon tries his luck from the three-point line. Not quite. Sturt makes a nuisance of himself, but the Lions come down with it. Awumi under pressure gets oh. the shot off when he heard the whistle. Does he get two? Yes, he does. Again, uh, I, you know, you got Awumi out there off balance. Back away there. I mean, he's trying to draw the foul. You can see that. And a good job by Awumi to get to the, get the foul and get to the, to the foul line with a chance to cut it to four. And that's the fourth personal foul there on uh, Sturt as well with uh, a few minutes to go in this ball game. Here's another look at it. As you say, just what's he doing if you don't foul him? Nothing. He's shooting off off balance. I mean, it's a tough call when you look at it again. Again, I, I don't know if it was a foul, but you could help out your case by not being so close there on a fall away one footed jump shot. Well, interesting now with Lewis on the sideline still. Doesn't look like he's coming back. Maybe he will. But as he's been on the bench, they didn't go to Lockhart. They've kept Awumi on the court running the point. So how much will that take out of Awumi, who's played a lot of minutes today, yep. uh, you know, be ha handling the basketball? Oh. 27 minutes already uh, in this ball game of a possible 36 for Alex Awumi, and you're right. I, I mean, Lewis doesn't look like he's gonna come back in the game, mainly because there's only 3.49 to go. Maybe if it went to overtime or something, they might have enough time, but they gotta tape it up and see if he can even jog on it. But meanwhile, Alex Awumi at the free throw line, this is the time where you have to make your free throws count late in the game, down six. One thing we know about Awumi with his time uh, with the Wolves and in the BBL uh, is he's a clutch player. 
I mean, we've seen it, and we've broadcast games, you and I, where uh, his team was in trouble, and he's come up big in big spots. And he makes both of them there. They're going to come with some full court pressure here, London. First time all night. And stolen away by Gachette. Gachette lobs it to Awumi. Awumi gets a shot off, but it doesn't go. And they've got a chance here to go the other way, the, uh, the Raiders. Oh, yeah. Dixon traveled, didn't put the ball down. And just, it was almost like a little hesitation on it. And he's called for the walk. But they were lucky there, London. That should have been two points. I'm not so sure there now. Again, it, it could have been. I thought it was a good move and a good pass. But the pressure caused Plymouth, Plymouth the problem. Let's be interesting to see if they do it again. What? Here's that shuffle cut for Watt. See if they can get him in the post. Yashet. Yashet with the mid-range pull-up for two. It's a two-point game. Big shot from Gachette. 11 points for him on the night. And that's really livened things up here in the copper box. Oh, Dixon with a nice fake pass, takes it to the basket, can't convert, and Williams will get there first. Lions with a chance to level it here. Awumi, Awumi puts the ball on the floor, and Bigger is gonna get called for the foul. And it'll be on the floor, surely. The uh, PA guy in the house trying to get two shots <laughs> for his team, but foul long. Who is the PA that. guy here? It's Vince. Oh. <laughs> you know, Vince, anything Vince. he can do to help his team out. Colorful on the mic. <laughs> Here's Ickamwin. To what? One on one. Goes at him. Ties the game at 82. And yeah, Plymouth look a little fatigued right now. London with a run. The place is on its feet. Vega. This is where Corletto comes up with a big shot, is it? It's up to Dixon at the free throw line. Doesn't go. Rebound. What? London can take the lead here with 2.25 to go. Like to see Watt get another touch. Awumi takes the long two! Knocks it down and London are in the lead. Awumi again, big shot. Well, we said it just a moment ago, that's what he does. Oh, and he's stolen away by Watt, diving on the floor, keeps it alive, London have it back. Well, this would be a big bucket if they can get one here. London get themselves two shots clear with less than two to play. All the momentum. They go to what again? What? Out to here can win. Williams now a Wumi in the low block. It's double team. Got to shoot. Got to shoot. Gachette gets it off. Doesn't go. Rebound Coletto. 90 Plymouth. seconds to play. Plymouth was going to call a timeout on that basket. Now he says no, one on one. Dixon fires up, blocks it down, oh. what a shot to level things at 84. Well, when you talk that much like Dixon does, you gotta come up big when it counts, and he did that time. Missed the last one, hits the pull up. Gachet, minute and some change. Williams fakes at the three, drives in, has it knocked loose. Plymouth come up with it, Bailey's out in front to Corletto, this is going up, you know it. Oh, but it doesn't go in. You could see he was aiming for that three. You thought it was going in, but not quite. Wow, interesting choice. And, you know, Corletto's a guy that can make those shots. Last time they played, he made a big three late in the game. Mm, two on two late in transition. Pull up three, didn't go. Now London with the basketball, a chance to take the lead. Well, the way the clock is, you feel London need a score here. Well, what with the nice step to the easy finger roll. 46 and a half seconds to go. Timeout call by Plymouth. And look at this from Demon Watt. Well, we talked about Watt getting the ball too close to the basket. They haven't changed the defense up at all. That time, just a little entry pass into the post. And you feel a little bit for Dixon, although he's allowing him to catch it. It's tough 
to stop Watt that close to the hoop. Big bucket, take the lead. It was almost like a little hesitation. Rock the defender forward, blows past him. Easy layup. London up one, up two now. 35 seconds to go. If you're Plymouth, do you go quick to try thinking about the clock and how much time there is? Well, you want to take a good shot, but yeah, you set something up quick to try to get another opportunity, but you want to make sure you take a good shot. And Dixon looks like he's the guy that you would go to one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, you know, Corletto obviously dangerous on the weak side of the floor, and then you have to look how you're going to defend Wiltshire right now with the pick and roll because throughout the year and last year he is as good as it gets in the pick and roll. The other thing is they still have two fouls to give Plymouth so if they were to get a score or fail to score they need a couple of quick fouls with 46 seconds to go I think they have I, don't, I think they don't want to take more than about 10-12 seconds for a bucket here you can't run the court 46 down. seconds. 46 yeah. Wiltshire. Wiltshire's got some space along the baseline. Corletto in the corner. Big shot. Doesn't make it. What? Uh, Wumi, sorry, with the rebound. Williams has it. They they can run the clock here. And there's Bailey with a foul. One and two of the home fans wanting something more than that. But that was just a foul. And this is where the uh, fouls against start to hurt them. Another two before free throws come. They don't need to foul, though. I mean, they don't really need, there's 19 on the shot clock, 31 seconds left, you can. You can trust your defense, but, but you've got to come up with a stop and a defensive rebound. And the other thing is it's going to take so long to get him to the line. There's still, well, two more, right? Well, they're not going to foul I here. I trust the D here, here. trust the D. Well, Awumi has a glance at the clock. You can see the shot clock in the bottom of your corner as it ticks down. Awumi goes, Awumi drives, Awumi misses! And the Plymouth Raiders can tie or win here on the final shot. Two to send it to overtime, three, oh! oh. oh what? It's All right, a foul though. on what? And Dixon will go to the line for two. No, 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 not in the bonus yet. They are. Are they? Yeah. Well, on the main scoreboard it says they are. We're going to get a timeout first from the Raiders oh, sorry my mistake it yep. isn't in the bonus neither team in the bonus so it's an end line possession here what do you do on a in a situation like this I mean they obviously clearly went for two on that occasion you go for two take overtime yeah I mean you go for the best shot available actually that was a good foul by London because Dixon did a good job of getting good position Wiltshire threw the bullet pass to him he would have had a layup if they didn't foul but now you know you you go in you draw something up on the, on the baseline, you have baseline plays. Still a lot of time here, so you don't have to rush anything. Uh, but hey, uh, you know, you wouldn't expect this anything else other than this game to come down to the last couple of plays. It's been back and forth all night. Well, we've said, let's see if we can get in there and see the uh, board there. He drew it up. Looks like somebody is cutting out to the corner and Dixon, maybe it is coming up to the high post he showed he's got that 17 18 foot jump shot Dixon if he needs that he can take it to the basket too and then get somebody like a Corletto or a Wiltshire in the corner as your outlet for three 7.8 seconds a lot of time you can actually get the ball in and run something off. it doesn't have to be that quick and if you're London you have to set the defense up how you'll play the screening there'll be some screening here Well, two for overtime, Watch three Watch Corletto for coming off the stagger. It's into Vigor, hands over to Bailey. Bailey, it's not loose, ball's on the floor, Vigor! Vigor with the step back, short! London come down with it, and London have won the ball game! A tremendous fourth quarter by the London Lions! They were down six late on, but in Alex Awumi and Timon Watt, they found a way to get through this game and pull out a victory and listen to this crowd. Well, the crowd exploded late in the game, but London made the plays they needed to. Oumi and Watt with the big plays, and Zach Gashek came up big for them tonight. And don't forget that half-court buzzer-beating three-pointer to end the first half. They did the job done, a big win for the Lions, an entertaining game at the Copper Box.
It certainly was. And you've got to say that Plymouth gave everything, uh, everything they had at this game and just couldn't quite hang on it was almost the exact reverse of the previous meeting for the between the two teams where Plymouth came back at the end well good defense by the Lions on that out of bounds play uh, bigger tried to make the quick slip pass they didn't get a good shot out of it but again excellent ball game both teams played well fun game here at the Copper Box well, it certainly was a very fun game here at the Copper Box. It's finished. The London Lions 86, the Plymouth Raiders 84. We'll be back with some reaction shortly. Well, yeah, that's the thing. I mean, having been through that down the stretch, did that play in your mind a bit that you let a few go in recent weeks? Uh, yeah, it did play in my mind, you know. Uh, it was close the whole game. They got a, they got up a couple points towards the end. I think it was going through everybody's mind, like, how are we going to respond to this? And I think we responded real positive. We stayed together, and, you know, we kind of we know what the situation is, so we, kinda, we knew how to get through it. And a great battle between yourself and Dixon going at it at either end of the floor. Yeah, he's a good player. You know, he's new to the league, so... I tried to give him a good welcome into the league, but he's a really good player, and I expect to see him, hopefully I'll see him again later in the season. And an excellent basket for you right at, down the stretch there, just to seal it for the line. Oh, uh, yeah, I needed to come up big for the team. Man. I struggled in the third quarter, especially defensively, especially on Dixon, got him get going in a little bit. And a lot of my rotations were slow, but I asked the coach to give me the ball. I had to make a play. I tell him to give me the ball, I got to make a play. He won't go up to me no more. So I'm glad I made the shot. I'm glad we pulled it out. Well, well played. Great job. It was good to get that win because we lost to this team a couple weeks ago, so it looks like we're progressing in the right direction. And down six late on, you got some big plays from Alex Sawumi, from Damon Watt, and also Zach Gachet. Yeah, I mean, Zach was unbelievable. He played above his creed today. He played good defense. He does that in practice all the time. It's so good to see it. Alex and um, D, they're professionals. They are American. They are imports. They stepped up in big moments and got the job done. And down the uh, final play there, good defensive job, didn't give them any easy pass and ended up forcing them into a poor shot. Yeah, it was great defense. I had the right size out there. We switched everything and guys just decided to dig in defensively and we were able to pull it out. It was a great job by the guys. And you snapped this losing streak. Can you go on a winning streak now? <laughs> well, hopefully. I mean, we got a big game next day, the best, second best team in the league at the moment, the cup finalists. So, you know, it's going to be a good task. But the fans were cheering us on tonight. We're playing at home. We finally got a win for them and the team. It's a new year, so we're trying to start a new direction. That was L's birthday. It's not his birthday every week, but we got to take that. So, Coach L, happy birthday. These two teams seem to go down to the final shot. Unfortunately, you guys couldn't get it done there. Yeah, it's a frustrating uh, you know, way to go down two points, but um, you know, we'll, we'll learn from it and move on. And um, you know, it's, it's been a good battle with these guys all year. So, you know, we got better from today, but yeah, still disappointing. In some ways, a bit of a role reversal from the last game where you made the charge at the end. You weren't able to sustain their, their fight back. Yeah, you know, we let him uh, first half. I think they hit 10 threes. They were 10 for 21 at halftime threes. And, um, you know, it's, we, we changed things in the second half and we played a lot better in the second half. But we just can't allow teams to, to get going like that in the first half. For some reason, we seem to be playing catch up um, a lot of our games. So we need to have a hard week of training this week and, uh, and come out firing next week against Leeds. And you mentioned the Watt Dixon matchup before the game. It was a real battle between those two guys. Yeah, they were going at it. You know, it's um, they're, they're two good big guys that are, you know they're handful for each other, and um, you know they were talking a little bit out there to each other, and you know that's good to see. It's all, it's all part of the game, and you know it's uh, it was a good battle. And uh, for yourself, move on to the next game. There's plenty of positives to take from this one. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, it's um, although we, you know we wanted the win, we come here to get the win. But you know, a couple of positives was Corey. You know, he played well again. Um, you know, we, we just need to keep working hard and keep building. And, uh, and, and yeah, we've got a couple of games now at home that we need to take advantage of. Well, a cracking game here at the Copper Box. The Lions sneaking it through. We'll be back here next week, both live on webcastsports.com and skysports.com as the London Lions take on last year's finalists, the Leicester Riders in the BBL Trophy first round. For Rob Paternoster, I'm Daniel Routledge. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week. Goodbye.